Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of the Week. Um, yes, buddy. And today, yesterday, we talked about some shenanigans that might have been going on in the NHL that I think possibly could be going on with the NHL and the Arizona Coyotes. You want to check that out. But today, we're going to look at trade rumors. Everybody loves, like everybody, Helen, everybody, Perlo Dance, Perlo Dance, Melissa, put that down. Yeah, it's Perlo Dance time. Trade rumors. Yes, Minnesota Wild has some rumors going on, and we're going to look at them. We're going to look at them right away. Uh, so... We're going to see, we're going to look at where the, in the pro hockey rumors, very good source, by the way, pro hockey rumors, highly recommend you go check it out. I very seldom get just absolute, something that has no uh, validity to it whatsoever. There's actually something to it, usually, when they post it on pro hockey rumors. So they're talking about looking JT Miller, apparently, Vancouver Canucks. And uh, we're going to look at how that would work out for Minnesota, how that would look out for Vancouver, and if there may be some other teams that might be sitting there going, I don't think so. No, 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 no. I think you're just going to be all over that, Minnesota. Because JT Miller, he's one of the finest in the land right now. He's getting a point a game on a really bad team. So it's quite possible there might be other people that are interested in a player such as that, wouldn't you think? I would think so, too. Okay, let's look at it here. There's the Vancouver Canucks. I'm going to look at this. Minnesota Wild targeting JT Miller by Zach Leach. Uh, great writer. Very good writer, by the way. Thing, uh, things are not right in Vancouver right now. They're off to a very disappointing start because they have no defense, but okay. While the front office and ownership have promised, at least publicly, to stay the course and not overreact their current tur- to their current turmoil, the NHL competitors are taking notice and lining up. Uh, at the front of the line are Minnesota Wild, apparently. Uh, while the pro- Ben Kuzma from the province, which I imagine is a newspaper there in Minnesota, uh, native Brock Besser would be the ideal acquisition. But reports have it that the Wild have, in fact, called on J.T. Miller. And this makes a lot of sense. Brock Besser, there's been some contract string going on there in Vancouver. Sounds like posturing to me. And they don't really have the cap space to sign Brock Besser. However, Brock Besser is a lot younger than J.T. Miller, has a lot more upside than J.T. Miller, and if he's willing to sign in Vancouver, if there had to be a choice and both wanted to stay, I have a feeling JT Miller might be the one on the go. We'll look at JT Miller's contract, how many years it has in a second. Uh, actually, it probably tells you in here. Uh, Miller can do it all from his center position, a balance score, fierce score checker, face-off guy. Miller has developed into a well-rounded top six pivot. Other thing here, I don't think a notice says talks about here, and I know that Minnesota fans are like, we have prospects coming up and all of that. I know. JT Miller can play wing equally as good as center. That's what makes him a really good uh, guy to look at as a possibility for for Minnesota. And we'll look at why that is here in a second. Uh Miller is signed through next season at 5.25. We did talk about the contract here. Pretty good contract for a guy who's going to point a game right now in the center position on a bad team, as we already talked about. Uh, the Kuzma suspects that a package from Minnesota would likely include Fiala. Um, we'll look at that. I'm not so sure about that, which would be attracted to the Canucks. He's a Minnesota writer. Not sure how much he pays attention to the Vancouver Canucks, but we'll look at the possibility that Fiala could go the other way. Uh, following a difficult negotiation this summer, the 25-year-old could benefit from a change of scenery. I do agree with that. 
I'm not so sure that Vancouver is a place that would end up, though. Uh, that wouldn't be it either. Uh, the Canucks would be able to command some building blocks as well. Their first round pick and top prospects are likely off the board. Yes, absolutely. But a guy like Kalen Anderson or Adam Beckham. Kalen Anderson is a small defenseman. Uh, we'll look at it here in a second. But that's a, it's really interesting, and it does make sense. I just don't necessarily think personally it makes the same sense as the writer here thinks it does or the writer in Minnesota. And here is why. Let's look at Minnesota's roster here. Okay, first of all, they got about two point some million, two point five million in cap space here. So if they were to go Fiala, it would work out cap space wise. Um, first, let me get into why I don't think Fiala would be part of the deal. J.T. Miller is a first of all is a center. Uh, LSP is, Elias Peterson could take that spot, and Fiala could come in and play in the top six. But look at their roster. Nils Hoglander, 5'9", 185. Connor Garland, a generous 5'10", 165, to say the least. Fiala, if we look at Fiala, 5'10", 193. They're too small. I just don't believe they're going to go that small in their top six, especially when they got assigned Fiala to a long term. They've got Garland long term. Um, Ho Nils Hoglander, they could move on from, I guess, but I really like him. I, I just doesn't seem to be a fit for Fiala here with all of these small players. Um, of course, Brock Besser. Brock Besser is a pretty, pretty big boy. He'd be up here too. And that's the other thing. Fiala is almost coming to the same situation here. There's a pretty good chance that he ends up playing down in the bottom three. In the, and his biggest, uh, he believes he's a top six forward, wants to get paid like a top six forward. Min him and Minnesota, th them in Minnesota are having discussions and arguments of whether that's the case. And in fact, he's getting played in the bottom, in the nine spot. He's getting played on the third line. And if he were to do that here, Vancouver probably wouldn't be able to resign him either. So... Although I, I like the idea of J.T. Miller going to Minnesota, I don't think Fiala is the guy that's going to come back. Now, I know Minnesota fans, you're going to be out there going, we have Rossi, we have Bo Boldy and all of that, and I agree. You do have Boldy. Boldy is not going to be a center in the NHL, though. I've had this discussion with Minnesota fans. I know he played center in college. He's not a prototypical centerman for the NHL. He's more of a winger, and as you can tell, that's what they're using him in the AHL for. They're playing him on the wing. Rossi, on the other hand, is ripping up the AHL, should be ready pretty soon. Here's the thing. Say you go get JT Miller. I'm going to offer up another trade here. See what you got to say about this, okay? JT Miller can play the wing, usually the left wing. You keep Fiala for now. You could trade him somewhere down the road. And for now, you can we play JT Miller as a number one center since he's a point a game center with Fiala and Zuccarello. That's the way they have it here. I don't know why they I think Felino would be better in that spot, but uh, that's here nor that. Um, anyways, he's your top line center. Hartman can now either come down here and take Victor Raff's spot because this is the deal. Victor Rask, so the salary works out, which means now Minnesota owes them. Minnesota's going to owe them if they take Victor Rask because nobody's taking Victor Rask. Everybody knows that. He's a poopty centerman. You know that in Minnesota. Don't think for a second people, general managers out there don't know that as well. You know, you're not hiding Victor Rask and going, tee hee, we're going to get rid of Victor Rask. For, and you're getting nothing for Victor Rask. This is, but in this deal, you're able to remove Victor Rask, but it's going to cost you Jordan Greenway. Jordan Greenway and maybe a first. 
for JT Miller, who has two years left at five, oh, just over five million. All right. So it's hard to, I know, I love Jordan Greenway too. I still think he has a ton of upside. Vancouver needs big wingers bad. He still probably should have more offense in that. In that, plus they get the first round pick for a guy that has only two years left and they need to get rid of uh, some contract stuff for next year because Vancouver is tied up to the cap here as well. All right. But they're probably needing to get younger. JT Miller doesn't make sense. They got to sign Besser, remember. Okay. So you take Greenway. You can work out a deal for him at the end of the season. Victor Rask is gone. Bye-bye. You did him a favor so you can get Greenway in a first-round pick. Maybe even a little more here. You know, that might even have to – you might even have to go with, like, a Connor Dewar or uh, Adam Beckham or something like that. Or maybe – I know you guys all love him, but he is a small little dude. Uh, Rem Pitlick. Maybe Rem Pitlick, something like that, to make it to entice Vancouver because Jordan Greenway hasn't hit it out of the park yet. I know you love him, I love him, but he just he hasn't. Either you can hold on to him and hope, or get a guy like J.T. Miller. Okay, let's figure out now. Rossi comes in. We got Rossi. We have no spot for Rossi. Yeah, you do. He's a winger. J.T. Miller is a winger as well. Jordan Greenway is gone. Fiala comes down here. Uh, JT Miller or Fiala can play bottom down here. You might have to trade him away to get some, some picks or, or fill another spot on defense. But you've got JT Miller playing with X, Erickson, Eck, and Felino. You can bring Caprizov up, up here, play with Rossi. There's a, lots of ways you can mix and match. Plus, you got Boldy also to fill the spots. But the thing is... JT Miller can play wing and 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 center. So if you get injured, say Rossi gets injured again, now what are you going to do? You're going to keep Brian Hartman up there? You can play JT Miller in the middle. One of the wingers get injured. JT Miller can play wing. This is the beauty of this guy. I would be all over this. And I know it might bite you in the butt because Jordan Greenway becomes what he could become. But JT Miller is what he is already. You're not rolling the dice here. There's a guy who is a point of game guy or close to it that can play center and wing. You're going to have to give up something to get him. So I think it would cost Greenway, Rask, which isn't a cost, uh, possibly Kalen Addison, or maybe a lesser prospect like Don Connor Dewar. Uh, maybe even some of those great prospects that they like, Carson Lambos, Ryan O'Rourke, they're going to want big, 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 big. They're going to want big. Somebody like that will finalize it. Carson Lambos would probably finalize it right there. Tell me what you guys think. What would you be willing to give up? How much do you like JT Miller? And uh, I'm going to move on to some other teams that are, if you think, if you think, oh, you're just going to throw away like, you know, Greenway straight across. I'll do Greenway straight across. First of all, take into consideration that there's some teams out there that are probably going to be sniffing at this as well. Uh, New York Rangers. They had JT Miller before. I don't have the article up here now, but they're the, the, from Pro Hockey Rumors as well. They have put it out publicly. They're looking for a top six forward. For that... Vancouver could look at possibly Ryan Stromback, who can play wing and center as well. Uh, but it, kind of odd because you would, I think you would just keep JT Miller in that sense because they're about the same age and not, not the same production. Uh, Philip Heidel, maybe, uh, has, 22 years old. You could go Philip Heidel. Uh, they're looking for defense. They got tons of guys, Zach Jones, Robertson, Schneider, like all of these guys. I, I, I think if they, if the Rangers pony up a guy like Matthew Robertson, Philip Heidel in a first, you're not getting, Minnesota's not getting him anyways. 
because the Rangers would be getting them. I don't think Minnesota's going to be able to compete without or want to. So don't think for a second you're just going to be able to throw anything and get JT Miller. There, I, I, I think, first of all, the Rangers don't seem to be too high on Heidel. Uh, and he's still got, he's only 22. He's got a lot of upside. They've got guys that could probably replace him. They could keep Ryan Strom and play him down there and play Miller up here with Panarin and Kako. That'd be a beautiful second line. Uh, they've got a ton of young defensemen coming up, so losing one of them wouldn't kill them. And they may not even have to give a first there, really, for two years of Miller, if that is, in fact, that they really do like Miller because they traded him to Tampa Bay. However, Miller is a much different player than he was when he was with the Rangers before. This guy is driven now. And uh, I could see them having an interest. Nashville Predators, they could use some guys, uh, some wingers there. They could get look Luke Cunning, uh, who is still a very young guy, figuring it out in the league, big, you know, fairly big, six foot one ninety seven, plays pretty big. Eli Torvanen, another guy that's been figuring it out, has got a lot of upside. He, he could be part of the deal. Um, they don't have the defenseman that they used to have for prospects, but a guy like Luke Prokoff could be out there. He's crushing it pretty well in, is it junior or college? Edmonton Oil Kings, 10 points in 15 games, 20 penalty minutes. Big boy. I think that would be of interest to uh, Vancouver as well. So there's, And then finally, the Boston Bruins, I'm sure, would be hot on the phone. For a guy like J.T. Miller, if they could work out a deal with, say, like a Charlie Coyle, uh, Jake DeBrusque. Um, may, I know Jacob Zaboro would probably be out there. A young guy that is really figuring and ha- was always thought of as a late prospect, a guy that would play like 26, 27 years old. And he's in the 24-year-old mark right now. Uh, plays tough, strong defensively. Stuff like that, and they've got more guys like uh, Euro Vakalainen, who's been who who they're nurturing there in the minors. I think Boston would actually throw a lot to get JT Miller because their window's closing and they know it. And JT Miller and Taylor Hall could probably have a pretty good chemistry together. Uh, JT Miller's a shoot first guy. Hall's a great passer. Good combination. I could see them throwing a lot. So. Minnesota, if you think you're just going to throw guys that, hey, we don't need that, so we'll throw them over there. No, it's going to hurt a little bit. You're going to have to give them something, something that is going to make you, that you don't want to give up. Simple as that. If you're not willing to do that, you ain't going to get them. All right. I thought that was interesting stuff, so I threw it out to you. That's my full 42. What do you guys think of those trades? And come see me. Pearl of Wisdom Show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show, 3 to 5 Eastern weekdays. We talk about stuff just like this, about your team, any team, all the time. Just come in, interrupt, tell me what you want to talk about, and we will talk about it. Or just listen to us banter. we got great hockey guys there. know a lot of stuff. That's my full 42. Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all the four major sports and stuff to do with the four major sports, you'll love Steel Flyers All Sports Network. K-bye!